These timbers we have here are pressure treated for ground contact. They'll actually last for 40 years. Our new retaining wall in the back, I want to line up exactly with your existing stone wall. So I pull the line that lined up with a stone wall. This now becomes the front of our new retaining wall. For the side wall, I need to pull a 90 degree angle line off of this back line. So to do that, I measured out and I put a mark at three feet. And then I measured off the intersection again and put a mark at four feet. Now using the three, four, five method, if I measure across the hypotenuse, I should be exactly at five feet, which we are. Three, four, five, that's our right angle. Now I set up a level line which establishes our grade in the front and runs level out to the back. Now that represents the top of our first timber, which is gonna be buried down into the ground. Now we're gonna dig down six inches for the timber and six inches for the crushed stone we're gonna put underneath it to make sure it drains. Pam, that looks great. It's so important to compact that base. Now we're gonna put in some three-quarter stone. And once we spread it out, we're gonna compact that and it'll make a great base to set the timbers on. To secure the timber to the ground, we're gonna drill a series of holes. Then through the holes, we're gonna drive a four-foot length of half-inch rebar to stake it in the ground. We wanna set it down right next to the line. Well, I'm good because I'm level with my line right here. Let me check it front to back with a torpedo level. I'm good. How are you up there? I'm a little high. I like to use a little scrap piece of decking like this to protect the timber. That's good. We're gonna use these four foot links, a reinforcing rod to spike the timber in place. Now with our eight foot timber staked in and perfectly level, we've taken down the string line because we're gonna use this timber as our reference point. Okay, you can see on the end of this pressure treated timber where we made our cut that we've exposed raw wood. We want to paint that with a wood preservative to protect it. Kyle, what I want to make sure is that the face of this timber for our back wall is plumb with our original string line because we know our original string line is at a 90 degree angle to the sidewall. Now to make sure our side walls are parallel, we need to take a measurement on the inside of the walls here. What do you have? 15 feet, four and a half inches. Okay, let's go out to the end of that timber. We're going to take another measurement. What do you have for a measurement now? 15 feet, five inches. Half an inch towards me, Kyle. In order to build a strong wall, we don't want the joints to line up. We want to stagger our joints. And that's gonna lay down here and cover that joint for us. Now what we'll do is install an eight footer here and that'll cover this joint. Now to attach the timbers together, we're gonna use a special wood screw made for pressure treated timbers. What I want you to do is put one about eight inches from this end eight inches from the sidewall, and then dead on the sidewall. Well, that's great. That's the last piece on the second course. Now, I really like the way you cut the end at a 45 degree, clipping the corner. It really gives it a good look. We're building our wall at the base of a very big slope where a lot of water comes rushing down, so we have to think about drainage. The first thing we've done is put some three quarter inch stone behind the wall and that'll drain the water away. Now we don't want that stone to get clogged by dirt. So what we're gonna do is roll out some filter fabric. You give me a hand on this side, you got it? Pull it right up against the banking. And this is gonna keep any dirt from getting down into our stone. Now to make sure that the water doesn't build up behind the wall, we are gonna install a four inch perforated pipe. It has little slits in here that will allow the water to run into it. We graded the back corner so it's higher than the front. So when the water runs into this pipe, it's all gonna come down this way and empty out right here. Now we just cover the pipe with more stone. Now we just cover the stone with a filter fabric. Well, we're about two thirds of the way up and the wall's looking good, but now it's time to think about how we're gonna anchor this wall, how we're gonna keep that top from moving forward. And we're gonna do that by putting in what's called a dead men or a tie back. It's two pieces of timber that have been screwed together. Drop it right down in. Now I dug this trench just so the T would fit in it. Now what we need from you, Pamela, line that up flush with the wall. Tell us which way we gotta go. Come towards me. Another half an inch. Uh, okay, perfect. Okay, now I want you to take and fasten that 
dead men down to the wall with two screws. We drilled holes through the top of the T, and we're going to drive re-rod through those holes to really lock this dead man in place. While I'm burying the dead men, you can slide that timber right up against it. Now, this is the next to the last row, and we have one dead man going in this row. Since this is going to be a play area, we want it to have a nice, soft base. And remember, we have positive drainage coming out of here, so all the water is going to run right out of the area. Mm -hmm. 